Okay, in this video, I will animate the sky. If you'd like to follow along and you didn't complete the previous video, you can open the file v11.nk in the Nuke directory. So now what I want to do is to animate that matte painting. So I could use like transform node and do some fake 2D animation. But well, I got a camera here and I got powerful 3D abilities in Nuke. So I'd like to use them. So first, we haven't looked yet how the animation look like with that camera that we imported. So let's just have a look here. Okay, we got a pretty basic uh, camera panning around. Perfect. And now if I were to look at it on the top of the sky, how it will look like? Well, it will look weird because the sky will be supposed to move as well as the camera is rotating. Great, okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, I will need to place my sky, my sky on the 3D object. And that 3D object then will be shot by my camera. Great, let's do that. So I will create a sphere because it's good to put a sky on a sphere. And that sphere uh, should be very, very big as it represents the sky and the infinity. So let's switch to the 3D mode by hitting the tap key while the mouse is on the viewer. And I will scale up that sphere like, like, like a lot, like, uh, no, more than that, like thousand, thousand. Okay, we now have a big sphere. We do have a little issue here, and that comes from the far clip of the camera of our viewer. So to fix that, I will hit the S key while my mouse is on the viewer to go to the viewer properties. And under the 3D tab here, I will come to far and I will add a zero to my far clip. And now it should fix the problem. So we'll close the viewer here, the viewer properties burden. And now, well, I will need to apply a texture, the sky texture to that sphere. So we'll connect, I don't know, let's connect the matte painting to it. I mean, the sky and sun part of the matte painting. And uh, it seems that it's a little bit weird because it stretched my matte painting to occupy the entire surface of the sphere. So this is not what I want. But let's see how it looks in 2D first. So remember to transfer that 3D world into 2D, I will need a scan line render node and I will need to connect a camera to that scan line render. So we'll use the same camera as here. And so let's organize that a little bit. I will place that camera here and I will make it clean with a little dot here. I don't know, need those guys anymore, so let's delete them. And uh, I will connect my camera to that guy. Okay, I will, I promise I will make that thing way more clean just in a little bit, but um, for now, this is good. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at the output of my scanline render. So we'll connect my viewer and I will hit tab on the viewer to switch back to 2D. So yeah. This is what I was supposing. It's not working because my texture is applied to the entire sphere. But now it moves. <laughs> so it's great, right? So we fixed something and we, but we still have another issue. So what I want to do here is I want that my last frame, remember my last frame is my frame of reference. I want that sky to be exactly like that on my last frame. So instead of applying this matte painting as a texture for my sphere, I would like to project that image on the sphere. And that will be like that, that I will texture my sphere by projecting an image, not by applying it to the sphere. So to project that image, I will use a node that we called project. 3D and it's a shader node. So that node can be found here under the shader category and uh, here, project 3D. 
okay? So what that node needs, well, it's the image that we want to project, and then we are going to connect that shader to the sphere. And now we need to tell that project node from where we are projecting that texture. Basically, what is projecting the texture? And what is projecting the texture? Well, it's the camera as well. So there we go. I connected my project 3D to my sphere. And now if I look at my skyline render, I got the same thing as I have here. Great. Now let's see when I scrolling through my timeline, but it doesn't move. Oh my God, what is going on now? Okay, let's have a look to the 3D viewer. Now, I can see that here through my camera, I'm projecting that little image here. But when I'm moving through and my camera is moving, the projection is moving as well, of course, because this is the element responsible of the projection. So if the element responsible of the projection is moving, well, the projection will move as well. And it will shoot the same thing. So yeah, we'll basically showing the matte painting, but if it moves with, if the projection moves with the camera, it won't work. So what we need to do? Well, we need to say that at the reference frame, the camera who is projecting the 3D won't move. And for that, I will use a node that we called frame hold. In the time category up there, frame hold. And I will hook that node here. And I will set the reference frames that we decided to remember the last frame. So we will say that we want to hold the frame 1100. And now if I scroll through my timeline, you can see that oh, we don't see my camera moving here. Okay, we can see that, okay, we don't see it because of the frame hold. But now if I go to my scanline render output and I look in 2D, I can see that now my sky is properly placed on the last frame and it's moving as the camera is moving. Perfect. Okay, we got a last issue that we need to fix here. Why do we have a black band appearing here? Well, it's weird because remember, we made sure to keep the overscan here, the bounding box, to keep those pixels information actually to avoid this issue. Well, it's very simple. It's just that we need to go to the project 3D node and we need to uncheck the crop here to keep the bounding box. And now our sky is animated and we don't have the bounding box issue. Great. Let's now uh, plug that guy here and see with the planet how it looks like. Cool, this is what I want. Perfect, okay. Well, now let's do that with the asteroids. See you there.